And hello everyone, welcome back to another episode on the new Ariador server with yours truly, W.C. Hamilton. I'm back out here at my Mesa mining town, or soon to be mining town, right now it's just a Mesa with a wall on it. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of work out here, as you can see, I'm laying these dirt blocks out to indicate where I would like the pathways to go. Uh, I'm kind of picturing in my head a little, a little town with a few small buildings around, you know, maybe one or two buildings right here. Uh, something in the middle or maybe like a big fountain and I can change it up something right here and then uh, something along this wall or or up there that has like a crane on it so it's got like a crane that's picking stuff up but then right here I want to have the bank and this is where we're gonna have all of our valuables stored and I'll talk more about that later as far as how it's gonna be integrated into the system but I think you guys are really gonna like this whole thing and this, this path is probably going to change. It may come back out to here instead of all the way up there. But we're going to have our smeltery. Just a big furnace array. Sorry. You done? You done eating? Great. So, just a big furnace array right here in a cool, like, still themed, but industrial building that we're going to place here in this little cutaway area and then up on the ridge up there is where we're gonna have all of our bulk storage for things like cobblestone regular stone andesite granite diorite all that kind of stuff in big silos and you're gonna be able to walk up the hill probably up this way somehow and then if you want to grab items from those you can just run up there and pull the stuff out of the chest and everybody will be welcome to that because that's not going to be the main focus. Uh, but basically how it's going to work is I have a mine shaft that's down there that we saw a couple episodes ago. I'm going to set up a minecart loading system with automatic protections against being too full and not sending itself off. Uh, that's going to send minecarts, chest minecarts full of stuff up here and to a unloader system with item filters that filter out the, I believe, seven blocks. Let's go up here and I'll show you how these are all laid out. The seven blocks types that we have for these silos. We have cob or we have stone, cobblestone, andesite, diorite, gravel, uh, grass. I mean, I'm sorry, dirt. It just turned into grass. And granite that are all going to be in these silos that take up this footprint. Each one is going to have a 3x3 three three item elevator in the back and then a chest right here and above me about 15 uh, redstone lamps which we have to make and I have all the stuff for those. 15 redstone lamps on each one of these are going to be very tall. Maybe, maybe not so much on the back ones. Maybe just these front four. But then they're going to be just a back and forth of double chests for storage for these bulk items that we're going to get tons and tons of. So after the minecart empties its stuff off, it's going to go back down to the mine shaft and await a next load of things to be put inside of it. After that, the items go through here and they get sorted as they travel along a path. And um, after they get sorted, they get sent through a dispenser clock thing and it will shoot them down an ice tray path up to the item elevator and up to their perspective thing so there'll be a row of these sorter dispenser combos down here and then lots of water and packed ice tracks underneath that are going to start here and just kind of branch off and they're going to go right down the center of each one of these so you see that I have all the centers at least two blocks off from each I think I did that two blocks off if may not I may have to move this one over one um, that way we don't have any colliding water paths and I don't have to use a gazillion hoppers so that's the plan for those and I need to gather lots and lots of resources because this is very intensive. But let's get started building some of the infrastructure. I have a lot of wood. We can build a bunch of chests and kind of get that laid out. And I can make a few hoppers to get at least one level of each of these silos done to give you an idea. And then we can start working on the minecart tracks. All right, so we don't have all the stuff that we need. Obviously, we only got 30 hoppers and 15 comparators. That, I mean, that will maybe do one silo. Uh, I don't even know. 
But uh, I am going to start off and kind of get these going so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. If what I said before didn't make much sense to you, I apologize. So let's just go like this. And then we're going to place some, we need those, some chest. Whoops. Some chest. Go in here. And then like that. So on and so forth. One, two, etc. All right. Now uh, we need to place a block that I can do this off of. So we have that, and we'll give that back. Thank you. So this is going to be what you interface with like this, and we're going to have some redstone lamps on top of it going up. And so let's just go ahead and make a little pillar here. Like that, like that. All right, and most likely just the rest of the build is going to be very much a themed of dark oak with spruce logs around here. So let's say we've got something like this. All right, then we want to draw off the chests, I believe, so that the lights don't blink constantly. So that means we need to place a block here and a comparator, and then a block here and a comparator. And basically what that's doing is saying once an item is stuck inside this chest, as if to say that single chest, all those hoppers, that double chest, that hopper are all full and something gets sitting in here, then it'll send a signal out into that block power, which powers the redstone lamp. And at the front, you see, all right. And then it'll go up quite a few blocks and then be capped off with a little dome. So we're gonna do that for all of these types of items over here. And then in the back, one other thing I was gonna say, one of, in, the, in the back, we're gonna have an item elevator. So the items will travel up this way. And once they get to the top, the last one will be, this one will be a hopper. And we'll say, we'll just do it like this for now. And let's see, get up here like that. Okay. And obviously, yeah, we need to fill this in. I think I missed one on the back. I sure did. There it is. Okay. And so that's going to basically be the idea. So there's an item elevator that will send whatever block, in this case stone, up into here. And then it'll funnel its way down and eventually get into here. So let's demonstrate what the lights look like when there's items in those chests up there. You see that the light will be on and it'll give you an indication from down there as to how full these resources are. So let me just see how tall I can make each of these if I make them all evenly. And then I'll come back in a minute and we'll show you the progress that we have going on with these silos. All right, so as you can see, we've got all the silos in. I just had to go make some new tools because my sword ran out, my picks ran out, my shovels ran out. <laughs> so, and I had to put in some more ladders and all that kind of stuff. And we're down to one comparator, but that's okay because that's all we need for the next part. Under each one, I hollowed out the sections and put in the item elevator plus signs out of the orange clay, so it'd be easy to find. I've got that one there, that one, that one. And what I wanna do now, that one, and there's one over here, and then there's two more this way here, and I think the other one actually might be from over here, yeah. So that's where all of these are. I want to clear out a little bit more space underneath though, because it'll make it easier to, to work if I can actually see what I'm doing and see all the different blocks that I have to work with and what level everything's on and all that. So I'm gonna clear all this red clay out. So yeah, I'm gonna get back to that and I'll come back with you when we start to put in the redstone. So I just came over here to sleep the night away and I kept hearing spiders, but I couldn't find one. Well, look what I found right here. So no cones was saying that he'd never seen a wild invisible spider and I just had to show this just for him. Uh, I don't have anything to name it and they don't take blocks. So 
he's just gonna have to be there and probably despawn. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I hear another one too. I think I have. To oh my god, I have two. There's another one right here. Creepy. Dual invisible spiders. <laughs> All right, back to work. And I don't have my tracks on me. And I didn't bring any tracks over here because I'm an idiot. All right, guys. So I have cleared out probably a little bit more than I needed to, front to back, left to right. But I do think I am going to have to go down a few more blocks uh, once we get down into some of these more complicated bits. But the first thing we need to do is start an unloading system because that's going to be the whole key to this process right here. So let's go ahead and put in this. This is going to be where they actually come off. And then we need to go down below and put in... Yep. Ah, I keep doing that. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna die again. So we need a block here and a block here. These are going to be our uh, redstone blocks for down underneath. You know, I'm fine with using the clay blocks to designate redstone up in the silos, but I want to make sure since we're in a clay area that... There's no confusion there. All right, so this goes into that. And this design is, I mean, because there's lots of different ways that you can do an unloader system. Unloaders are pretty easy. This one is a very compact design that I saw on Mumbo Jumbo's channel, and I can send a link to that down in the description. Uh, that's why I liked it, because it's just this big. That's it. That's all you need. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we have to tie in our... Uh, dispenser clock thing okay so we need to go in this direction so let us let us put this this way yep all right the hopper is going to run into the side there and then we have to go down again let's see if I can do this yeah nope fail okay redstone block of thing that I need to place upon. <laughs> All right, do, do. And I don't need you. I don't need you or you. Saving resources. I do, actually, I did need that one. I don't need that one. So now, we're going to take this, and we're going to place, oh my gosh, I didn't bring, <laughs> I didn't bring any repeaters with me. Oh, you're kidding. All right, there we go. Place that, place that. Redstone, 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 redstone. Okay. And that. All right, from here, this is, so this is where everything's going to start happening. The minecart is going to come from the channel down below. It's going to get sent up from the mine shaft, go up here, and start unloading all of its cargo right here at this little station. At this point, this is going to get sent into a water channel, which is going to go back this way and along this back wall, or probably a few blocks more that way, so we can get all these in. And then it's going to start running along here, at which point, once it reaches certain areas, we're gonna have item filters that represent which items are gonna go in which things. And once it gets put into the item filter, it'll get shot down into another one of these dispensers, which will dispense it into another water stream and send it up the item elevator. So it's a little more complicated than it probably needs to be, but I wanna do it this way. All right. And good day to you. <laughs> it's a new day here. And I'm going to be honest, it's actually like two days later uh, from the last clip that you saw. So I don't know how I ended it. I'm going to be honest. So welcome. <laughs> but yeah, I was up till about 4 a.m. last night after I got home from work. And I have been doing a lot of work. You may remember because it was such a short time ago that this thing existed. And I think it was like right here. I moved it down a little bit, but it's the same exact deal. I put in the water channel and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the item sorter slash dispenser clocks 
which we'll drop down here and I'll show you each one of these. They're all neatly laid out. So you've got right here an item filter and there's no overflow protection because there's nothing beside it to worry about it overflowing. It, it immediately gets dispensed into another water channel. So you don't even have to worry about that. Save a little bit of resources there. And obviously we're gonna have to put in walls. I'm thinking about doing black glass just cause it's like my go-to favorite, especially with these color patterns right here. Um, but it'd be nice to be able to see all the items flowing around in here in like a big machine and this will get changed out to black glass too but I just wanted it in to figure out where the signs needed to go but as you can see we've got them kind of organized uh, with where the dispensers are so we're gonna figure out okay this one's andesite so we need to put andesite in the filter in there this one is I think stone stone so the second one's gonna need the stone filter. This one's gonna need the cobblestone. That one is gonna be the diorite. So you see we've got stuff on the front and back of each of these uh, silo patterns. And then over here we have the last one's gravel, granite, and then dirt. So it took quite a while to dig this out. And I, you know, again, like I said before, I went a little overkill with how much I dug out because I just like having that headroom, you know? I wanna be able to walk around here and see what I've done to the, to the inside of this. But I also have now like three double chests full of clay just from this part. So there's that. I mean, there's little little side benefits. I can use that for something else. Uh, and a lot of it is red clay, or most of it's red clay, but there's a lot of regular too. Uh, yeah, you, well, actually most of it's probably a hardened clay, so I can make all kinds of pretty colors with that. That'll actually come in handy down the road. But yeah, the next thing we need to do is I need to make up a bunch of black stained glass, uh, put the fence posts in, get the glass in, get the water in, and then switch all this out for glass, and then this whole thing will be done. And then technically we could start chucking items in the filters and then throwing stuff down the, down the line, and it will go and get sorted on its own. All right, so I've cooked up some glass and it's time to make some black stained glass with all these ink sacks that I just picked up. Uh, I got way more than I needed because I forgot how to math. Anyway, hopefully this will be enough. Let's run over here and start placing these. So here we out. Here we go. First things first. Place blocks. We're gonna make sure we put all these in before we put all the glass in, so we don't have to take it out. Eh. And two. All right. Well, we might as well start on this end. So let's go placing the glass. Oh man, it is like we planned that. We didn't, but it's like we did, so we could say it. Um, now we need to put in the water, and we also need some signs. I only have 13 on me, and I knew we are gonna need a lot more than that. So, I uh, probably should make some while I'm up here. If I've got any wood left, because we did just use it all to make those stupid fences. I just saw it, I just saw it, right there. All right. That's 10, 10, oh man, excellent. My Xbox just turned on. I think it thought I said X, whoops, Xbox, but I said excellent. Oh well, daggum thing. 
Uh, go all the way to the end. Yes. Yes. Put a piece of stone in there. Quit giving them to me. Nice. All right, that works. All right, and it looks like we're going to also have to put in the uh, glass on top, unfortunately, because they were popping out of there. So that's something we'll have to do. And maybe I should have thought about this a little bit further ahead. Ugh. Actually, that can work. And then we'll just put one right here. Yeah. One, two. Okay. Excellent. So now we just need to prime the filters. And then we should be on our way to a working system. And we can try it out. Yay! All right, well, let's put that back in there. So now, when we start sending items down here, they should all fill in correctly. Uh, so why don't we give that a go? Might as well eat this, because I'm hungry yet again. They should make an ang... They should make an anti-hunger beacon. You know, one that's just... Like 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 a regen beacon, but it keeps you full, so you don't have to keep eating and carry stuff around with you while you're at your base. That would be amazing. All right, so all of those are empty upstairs. We've got our overflow slash extra items protections chests in at the end. I think it is time for a systems check. So we're gonna just throw in an assortment of items, and we'll put those in. All right, what's next? Oh, I see uh, cobblestone going. Right? What is this? How did... Oh, they may be falling off the top because I don't have them in place, maybe? Where are you coming out? So is it a little lossy right now? Yes, but is it working? Let's go find out. Please be working. <laughs> Tell me that this is stone. Yep. Cobblestone. Yep. Gravel. Yep. Dirt. Don't have any dirt. Oh, dirt's at the end. That's right. Granite. Okay. Diorite. Yeah. I saw that one go up just for a second. Uh, andesite. Yep. So as long as dirt works, which it should, I don't see any reason why it won't. We just need to figure out why all of these are falling out because we have that there. So it should be working. It's the only one. So let's go up to the very top and see. Oh, this one's doing it too. Oh yeah, they're, I think they're falling off the top. That's what it is. Let me go grab some orange clay and make a little barricade for them. Yeah. Oh. Okay, now it should be working completely. Let's see, are you? Dirt, yes, dirt is working, they're all working. And we shouldn't get any more spillage. Once I clean all this up, we'll, we'll know. Other than up here, obviously. All right, so it appears to be working. That's good news. I still have to cook up some more, a lot more actually, of this black stained glass. And we're gonna change out all of this. And maybe even now that I've all put them in and thought about it, I'll probably change these signs out for slabs. But I don't need to, but I may. <laughs> well, I'll get working on cooking up some more glass and put that in and I'll come back at the end so we can kinda go over everything. I'll be back. <sighs>
Okay guys, this is probably going to be the last update for this episode. It is now 1.30 in the morning after the last clip from earlier in the day. We went out to dinner and had a nice time. Went out with some friends of mine and um, had, a, had like a, a Japanese restaurant where they cook in front of you at the table. And they do all the fancy flipping the utensils and all that kind of stuff. It was really cool. A lot of fun. But I had to come back and get grinding this thing out because it's just, that's all it was. Mining, I had to find diamonds, I had to get more iron blocks and gold ore and all this kind of stuff to finish off everything that we're doing. But oh man, we are finished with everything as far as from an unloading to loading in this microcosm of... of uh, stuff that we've built in here. It's not connected to anything on either end, but it does function as intended within its own little self. So let me kind of walk you through uh, from the beginning over there. You, well, yeah, that's the unloader. It spits it out into this water stream. There are sorters all along here that pull out the different blocks like we showed earlier that send them up the item elevators. That's going to make me sick. And then the ones that don't get sorted over there go over this way. There's three more right here. To send those last three of the main uh, block types. The next one we have are two item sorters, one for iron ore and one for gold ore, that funnel both of them into this chest right here. And you can see we have some iron and gold ore in here. And I'm going to just walk you through these before I explain what this, this mess is. This one is for coal, like broken up coal, like coal stuff. Diamonds. Emeralds. I don't know if we ever actually come across these. We'd have to mine really far, I think, to get to an extreme hills. But I put it in there just in case. You never know. I might want to sort stuff anyway. Lapis and I and and that one I almost forgot about. I forgot about lapis, so I had to add an extra row in. And redstone. And then this last one down here isn't a sorter. It's just some hoppers, and it is for random. What did I say? Random items. So anything else? If I accidentally run into some clay or some sand. If I drop my sword in there, whatever, random items chest, and that'll get sent to a different area. So, what is all this contraption here? We know what sorters do and how they work. What is this? Well, this is a minecart loading system. Uh, I don't, let's see, I have this. Let me do an example. So, we've got a minecart with a chest, it has come back from its route, which this one right here. And this one with the coal in it are both going to go to the smeltery building. Uh, obviously these to be smelted and this to provide the fuel for the smelters. And that's why we have to have them separate because they're going to go to different parts of the machine down there. So they're going to be on two different tracks. But I think I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is run them right underneath this. And they're going to run alongside each other. So this guy's going to come around here, come around here, go to this and over. And this one's just going to make a sharp turn and go right here and back. And they're both going to just go beside each other and on out. Um, but this is how it works. So you see you've got the minecart comes up here. It's over top of this, but it won't, uh, it won't actually go because of the flower pot, but it's still unloading stuff into it. There's two ways that this can get sent off. The reason I chose this method of loader versus the one like Mumbo Jumbo or Xuma or something like that is because all of those had issues with overloading. So in the sense, if, if this chest was full of stuff, that obviously you can't fit a double chest worth of stuff into a single chest minecart. So what would happen is it would cause the comparator to put out such a strong signal that it would lock the rail in the off position and it wouldn't allow it to send off. So we don't want that to happen. So there are two methods for this to send off. One, there's this comparator right here. When it detects a signal, whoops, there you go. It just did it right there. When it when it detects a signal, it's powering this, it, it keeps this turned off. When this runs empty, it'll turn off, which turns this back on, and then it goes over here. Perfect. The other method is if this is full, even if this has signal in it, this detector rail will detect that it's full here and it's sending power this way. But you've also got this one right here, 
which is going to detect that it's full and send enough strength out this way. And what it's doing is either direction, whether it comes from this way or whether it comes from this way, once it gets to this block, it's going to send the minecart up, which pushes it because it goes into the same block space because of this flower pot right here, causing it to leave and disable everything, which then turns this rail off. So it goes up and down, up and down and stops and it's reset. So there's no chance of this thing clogging up unless somehow, some way, the carts get stuck. So I'm gonna have to make sure I have enough redstone, I mean, pfft, uh, powered rails to make sure that they never get stuck inside the walls or anything like that. But it should be fine. And see, now you've got this full uh, minecart right here. So now if we empty it and we push him back on here, come on, it's gonna send it right away because there's nothing in here stopping it. So it's just gonna keep going back and forth and you saw it pushed it back off. So that's really cool. This design was won by a YouTuber named the Lazy Lumberjack. Well, that's his Minecraft name. He's got a different uh, YouTube account, but I will put a link to his account and the video down in the description so you can check it out for yourself and see it's a really cool video and um, you should definitely give him a like, give him a subscribe. It's really cool stuff. But I anyway, I added that same unit here, 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 and here so I never have to worry about it if I fill this whole thing up. And, you know, because if I'm if I'm putting stuff in here right now, this isn't connected to anything. If I keep throwing items in here, eventually this is going to fill up. And I'll, I'll run into a problem if it didn't have overload protection. So that's going to do it for us today. I thank you so much for watching, as always. Hopefully you found this video entertaining. I don't know. Maybe you don't. It's all good. Either way. But I try. I do try. I promise. And... If I did something really stupid in here, feel free to let me know in the comments or if you've got an idea for how I can improve this, by all means, but I like how it is right now. I like how it's a little bit complicated and a little probably over the top and I cleared out way more than I needed to. It's just kind of, I like the big open space and I just, it's just neat. But yeah, I'm open to suggestions for all these different things and I think it'd be really cool. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you all next time. Bye. I'm gonna have a huge mine shaft down there. <laughs> oh no! Ah. <laughs> so, well, you can put in ladders. Well, I don't care. I don't care. Okay. That's that, that's that's it. No, I do care. I'm sorry. <laughs>